After making the new Dimetrodon video, I got a ton of people saying stuff like, did Dimetrodon evolve into Spinosaurus or vice versa? And let me just ask you guys, did you even listen to the video? Dimetrodon definitely did not evolve into a dinosaur. As stated in the video, Dimetrodon was closer related to mammals than dinosaurs. There are a ton of anatomical features that indicate that Spinosaurus and other Spinosaurids are megalosoid theropod dinosaurs. Even if they weren't, it couldn't have possibly evolved into Dimetrodon or vice versa. Spinosaurus lived in the early Cretaceous about 100 million years ago, while Dimetrodon lived in the Permian about 280 million years ago. Spinosaurus was a theropod dinosaur, and Dimetrodon was a synapsid. The two species are almost completely unrelated. Dimetrodon's ancestors split from Spinosaurus's in the early Permian, long before dinosaurs and mammals even evolved. So no, Dimetrodon most definitely did not evolve into Spinosaurus, and no, Spinosaurus did not evolve into Dimetrodon. I also got a ton of fan art from you guys, illustrating, what else? New Dimetrodon. And thank you so much to all that submitted their Dimetrodon artwork. All these illustrations are amazing. You guys are awesome. Here is just a short montage of illustrations submitted. Links to these artists in the description below. I had a ton of fun making the Dimetrodon video, and it is always a lot of fun making these videos. I am happy to spread new knowledge of prehistoric animals, and I love the fact the paleontology community is happy to contribute to science and spreading the news. Okay. Back to our regular scheduled program. For the longest time it was said, we will never know what color dinosaurs were, and we will never know what dinosaurs or any prehistoric animal for that matter would look like. Well, here we are, 2015, and we do in fact know the colors of some dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. And that is simply amazing. I never would have expected that we would actually be able to see what dinosaurs look like in real life, but again, here we are. This episode is devoted to talking about what we know about dinosaur and prehistoric coloration, and to help you guys get some perspective on dinosaurs and prehistoric animals in general. Until fairly recently, the only evidence of dinosaurs was fossilized bone with no soft tissue preservation. We could only infer what was around these skeletons. That was until the discovery of feathered dinosaur fossils, which did preserve soft tissue, allowing paleontologists a way to discover dinosaur color. The first fossil animal with preservation of color was Anchiornis. Living in the late Jurassic, Anchiornis was a bird-like dinosaur that is classified to be a transition species between Troodons and Dromaeosaurs and early birds like Archaeopteryx and modern day birds. So picture a bird with teeth and you got the idea. We have discovered several fossils of Anchiornis that have preserved its feathers some of which are so well preserved that the fossil preserves the melanosomes, or pigment cells, that gave the feathers color and life. In 2010, scientists examined these melanosomes under a microscope to determine the color of Anchiornis. Scientists compared these melanosomes to that of modern day birds and were able to determine a way to see the color of the feathers. Dense melanin equals dark coloration, and lack of melanin equals light coloration. This process of looking at the density of melanin was repeated all over the body of Anchiornis, and scientists were able to determine the full coloration of the animal. It turns out, Anchiornis was primarily gray and black. Its head and crest was brownish red, which most likely means it was used for sexual display. The tips of Anchiornis' wings, tail feathers, and feet feathers was black and white. Anchiornis was very beautiful in life, covered in colors extremely similar to some modern day birds. With Anchiornis' color being determined, a few other dinosaur colors were discovered using the same technique. The second one was Sinosopteryx, a relative of Compsagonathus. This little dinosaur was beautifully preserved, exquisitely displaying dino fuzz. After looking at the fossilized melanin, scientists concluded that Sinosopteryx was covered in reddish-orange fuzz, similar to the color of a fox. But that's not all. The color on its tail revealed that Sinoceropteryx possessed a band or striped tail, which most likely aided in camouflage. This tail coloration pays a striking resemblance to that of a modern-day ring-tailed lemurs. A few other dinos' colors were examined too. The strange double-tail feathered bird Confucius Ornus was discovered to have a coloration with hues of gray, red-brown, and black. This coloration may have looked very similar to the modern-day zebra finches. The predatory dromaeosaur and velociraptor relative Sarnorthinosaurus was discovered to have possessed feather coloration of reddish brown, yellow, black, and gray, which was spread all around its body. This probably allowed it to camouflage in the trees and gave it an appearance similar to that of a modern hawk. 
which makes sense due to its predatory hawk-like niche and its forest environment, which would require a skilled hunter to blend into the trees. The legendary Archaeopteryx was examined as well. It was revealed to have possessed a dark black coloration that may have covered the whole body. Yi Chi was examined and revealed to have possessed a blackish hue existing all across the animal. In the head, the color was yellow-brown. This yellow-brown color is also found on the wing membranes. So Yi Chi had a yellow-brown head and wings. The calf feathers of Yi Chi were primarily black. And lastly, we got Microraptor. Microraptor's feathers were revealed to be black, shiny, iridescent feathers, extremely similar to that of a modern-day crow or blackbird. Microraptor in real life looked like a crow with four wings. Amazing! We actually know the coloration of other prehistoric animals as well. Marine reptiles not related to dinosaurs were recently discovered to have well-preserved scales that allow us to see their coloration. The large marine monitor lizard relatives, the mosasaurs, color was discovered in 2014. The melanin preserved in the exquisitely fossilized scales of Platea carpus reveal it had a coloration called countershade, which means it had a black back and white underbelly much like a great white shark, killer whale, penguin, or leatherback sea turtle. So in real life, a mosasaur looked less like this and would have paid more of a resemblance to modern day marine creatures like whales or sharks. This coloration would disguise the animal from below and above as well as protect its back from the harmful sun rays. The coloration of the dolphin-like ichthyosaurs was much like a modern-day sperm whale's, completely covered in a uniform black coloration on its back and stomach. This would also disguise it in the dark abyss of the ocean. As for any other dinosaurs or prehistoric animals, we don't know. We can only hypothesize, based on the animal's niche and environment. So let's talk about what T-Rex's coloration was. Was T-Rex really green or, I don't know, purple? We can only speculate based on its niche and environment. Odds are, T-Rex was not green or even brightly colored. T-Rex was a strong and bulky apex predator. It was the lion or bear of its day. Odds are, it was an ambush predator and had to stay well hidden to catch prey. If you look at all modern muscular apex predators like big cats or bears, you will probably get the best idea of the coloration of Tyrannosaurus rex. No modern terrestrial apex predators possess bright greens or purples. They possess browns and blacks that help them camouflage to the best in the, its environment. Even animals that inhabit a lush green jungle are brown in color, black or tan. Just look at jaguars or tigers. Tyrannosaurus rex was most likely no different. T-Rex probably was brown, tan, gray, or black in color, which gave it an edge on its prey. Tyrannosaurus rex inhabited subtropical forest regions and semi-arid plain regions, kind of similar to the modern-day savanna, just without grass, which means it most likely had to blend into the dark shadows of the trees or brown or tan colors of the plains. So think less Barney the Dinosaur and more Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Saurian Project. Either one. It might have been black or brown, we don't know. All we know is that it was most likely darker in color, or maybe tan. To add to that, it is completely possible that Tyrannosaurus Rex and some large carnivorous theropod dinosaurs could have been striped or spotted to help them blend into their forest environment. You need to remember, all this is speculation based on modern predators of similar niche. We don't know until a fossil is discovered with the well-preserved melanin, but until then. I think dinosaur color is best captured by the drawings of Julio Lacerda. Dinosaurs most likely were colored a lot like modern day animals, and they probably were a lot more like modern animals than we think. The first step to understanding that is giving them realistic colors. So the next time someone tells you you will never know what dinosaurs look like or the, what color they were, Use this as an opportunity to educate them on the amazing science captured in the well-preserved fossils of dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals, some of which that are yet to come. First of all, thanks for watching. Sorry about the delay of this episode. A lot has been going on with me recently and I've been very busy. Next week, I will try to resurrect my explanation series and talk about the highly anticipated Over the Garden Wall episode I was talking about a long time ago, which will start a new series where I explain more movie theories and such. This will coexist and co-release with my science and paleontology video series, so all fans will be pleased. Once again, thanks for watching, and goodbye.